Pernamaan untuk berada di bahagian hadapan ini Untuk dilangsungkan sesi bergambar Pastinya hari ini kita ada rakan-rakan dari -rakan 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 -rakan. That's right, I'm in the lead, if you count being behind 2,000 other people in the lead. Welcome to another thrilling video with the International Big Shot. This morning I thought I would talk about a few tips that people coming to visit Kuala Lumpur might be interested in hearing. So stick around, you're going to be on the edge of your seat. If you're really paying attention, you might notice that this is not a normal video. I'm doing something that I've made several videos about previously, and that is the KL Car Free Morning Walk. Today's walk is only five kilometers, I hope. The last time I did this with Grace and her husband, it ended up being more like 13 kilometers. It was a killer. But anyway, today I'm joined by 2,000 of my closest friends as we walk through the traffic-free streets of Kuala Lumpur. All right, let's get started. I grouped these tips into three categories. Arrival, personal happiness and comfort, and then a special category just for eating. So here we go. This first tip is actually something you should do before you arrive. In some of these tips, I think, especially on arrival, if you travel before to another country, then these are gonna seem like obvious things to you. But some viewers might not know what to do in these situations. The first thing you should do is figure out how you're gonna do data on your phone while you're traveling. If you've looked into it, you know that international data costs are ridiculously high. So you don't wanna be paying for international data or roaming data with your home phone provider while you're traveling. The easiest way to fix that is to use an eSIM. Now, if you have a more recent phone, your phone can probably use multiple eSIMs or multiple SIM cards, my advice is to find an eSIM for the country that you're going to, in this case, Malaysia, and install that any, wherever you are before you leave the country. That way, when you turn your phone on, when you get to KL, it will connect with the local network and you'll have local data and you won't be paying ridiculous prices for your roaming data. But that's only the first part of the data problem. The second thing you want to do is make sure you still continue to re receive text messages at your home phone number. If you have to contact your bank or log into a website or something, they're going to try to send you a text message. And if you don't have your home phone line turned on, then you're not going to receive that text message. This can be quite frustrating. So what you do is you leave your home phone line turned on data roaming turned off and use data on the eSIM for the country that you're in. That way you'll continue to receive your text messages. You'll have data at a lower cost in your, the country because of the eSIM and you'll be happy and thanking me for the rest of your life. The next tip is where to get money. The only money that I carry with me now is an emergency stash of US dollars and then some stray bills that I might have from countries that I plan to visit. When you arrive in KL, the easiest and safest way to get money is to use your ATM card and go to a bank and take it out of an ATM machine. But you don't have to worry about carrying enough money for your whole trip. Oh, that, those days are over. So make your life easy, bring your ATM card, use ATM machines. They're all over the place in a big city. Second thing is credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, widely accepted. 
American Express, not so much. But generally speaking, credit cards are used quite frequently in Kuala Lumpur. Apple Pay, Google Pay, and other kinds of phone pays, whatever they're called, those are also quite popular in a lot of places. They also have some quirky payment systems, electronic payment systems that you've never seen and probably never heard of, but you won't be using those anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm already falling behind. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm already a sweaty mess. I'm not sure the Al Rizwan will be happy to see me later. The third thing is the one thing that a lot of people worry about when they take international trips. And that is how to get from the airport to wherever it is their hotel is or wherever it is they're staying. Luckily, Kuala Lumpur has a lot of transfer services at the airport that you can use. The one I like to use is the is called the KLIA Express Train, and that takes you from the airport terminals to either Terminal 1 or Terminal 2, it doesn't matter. And it takes you directly to KL Central, which is the main transport hub downtown. From there, you get on the LRT, the monorail, get a taxi or a grab. It brings you right into town, and it costs about 55 to 60 ringgit. The cheapest way to get into town is by bus. I've never taken the bus from the airport into town, so I'm not exactly sure where you get it, but it is the cheapest and it goes from 15 to 20 ringgit. The most expensive way to get into town is by taxi. It's also probably the most comfortable way and the one that probably eases your mind the most. You just hop in a taxi and it'll take you directly to your hotel but it's also the most expensive. You'll pay twice as much, usually, for a taxi as you will for the express train. This next section of tips falls under the category of personal happiness and comfort. Number one, there's two things involved with that. Bring an umbrella with you and something to wipe your face with when you're out walking around. A face towel, an old washcloth. REI, REI might sell expensive versions of this. All it is is a dish towel. And it comes in handy in the humidity. You will need an umbrella at some point. Malaysia usually rains. I think I mentioned this in my last video usually rains a lot in the afternoon, late afternoon and evening, but sometimes it rains any time of day. So make sure you have an umbrella. Another thing to always bring with you is tissues. In public restrooms in Asia, tissues of any kind are usually not provided. Consider yourself lucky if they are. So if you use a restroom like that, you're going to need tissues. This is not a problem though, because you can always find someone selling tissues on the street. Usually it's a handicapped person. They're in a wheelchair or they may be blind, selling one or two ringgit packages of tissues. They're really trying to collect money, but the tissues will come in handy. So if you see somebody doing that, by all means, give them some money and grab a little package of tissues. In terms of safety, the number one thing I can think of for this video is crossing the street. Traffic in Malaysia moves on the left, so always look to the right. This is exactly opposite of what you've been told to do in your entire life. The best thing to do, of course, is to look both ways, but always be aware that traffic, when you first step out into the street, is coming from the right. I should have had this in pre-arrival also, but leave your cotton shirts at home. Wearing cotton in humidity like this, it doesn't work. They will not keep you cool. You'll be soaking wet, and once they get wet, they stay wet. Go to REI, go to Arm Under Armour, get something that's built to be sweated in. You'll be much more comfortable. They'll get soaking wet, but they'll dry quickly. No cotton. Well, I've just completed the five kilometer walk and I'm back at DBKL where everything started. It's usually a Zumba class after this kind of thing. And I think that's what all the music is for right now. I don't usually join Zumba. 
and I don't think I'll break that practice today. These last tips have to do with eating. The number one thing I would suggest, when people come here, for, if you're coming to Asia for the very first time, you probably don't consider street food as very hygienic. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. There's almost a 99% chance that you don't have anything to worry about. And if you pass up trying street food, no matter what kind it is, then you're really passing up a very special part of Kuala Lumpur. If I had to say what my favorite part of living in Kuala Lumpur was, it might be street food. You can find noodles, rice, fried dishes. Most of the stuff you find on the street is what you would normally consider as comfort food, like pizza, ice cream. You're not gonna find those on street food in Kuala Lumpur, but it's foods like that, things that people eat because they enjoy them. Don't pass up street food, give it a try. My final tip has to do with how you eat. Depending on what kind of food you're eating will determine the kind of utensil that you use. A lot of times when people come to Asia for the first time, they think that they're always going to be eating with chopsticks. That's nowhere near the case. For example, if you're eating a rice dish, the proper utensil to use is a spoon. No one eats rice with a fork, and very rarely, only when you absolutely have to, will you find someone eating rice with chopsticks. Also, it's not unusual to find people eating with their fingers, especially things like nasi kandar, nasi lemak, anything with rice in it. Eating with your fingers is perfectly acceptable. It's a traditional way of eating. And if you watch the video I made about the Malaysian media superstar Grace H.R. Ling's wedding, you'll notice that Lady Aisha was demonstrating how you eat with your fingers in our Nasi Kandar restaurant. So don't be surprised if you f see people eating with their fingers. In fact, you may want to try it. It's kind of fun. You're wondering, what do you do when your hands get covered with food? Well, beforehand, in, when you walk into a restaurant where it's okay to eat with your fingers, you're going to notice that there's a sink somewhere available to the patrons in the restaurant. Not in the restroom, it's right out there in the restaurant. You wash your hands before you eat and you wash your hands after. Give it a try, it's fun. So with all that said, I'm gonna go into the Al Rizwan, have my breakfast, and then wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching, be seeing you.